Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I'm Shenken Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today's video, we have the how to overclock and undervolt, this time with the RX 6700 non-XT, okay? I have several videos on this card that you can see on the video section, uh, some testings um, against, for example, the 6600 XT, the 6700 XT, 25 games tested on this card, and now I am sharing with you my overclocking and undervolting profile, uh, and the best settings to actually get for this card in terms of power draw and performance, okay? That's what I do. Now, before anything, let's go to the common questions. Common questions! Will this damage my GPU? No. no. It won't damage your GPU, okay? If I'm showing you this, is because it is safe to do it, okay? Even if in the process your computer your computer like crashes sometimes. It's part of actually finding out what's the best settings for your computer, okay? It may crash one or two times. It just won't break your GPU, okay? You are completely fine. And over time, no, it won't also degrade it because we're undervolting, so you're actually extending its life, okay? So, yeah. I have a Sapphire, uh, blah, 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 Gigabyte, I have Aces model, blah, 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 uh, can I use these settings? Yes. yes, it doesn't matter the model you have. You may have a model from Sapphire, from Asus, from Powercaller, it doesn't matter the brand of the cooling system, okay? As for now, I believe that we only have the Sapphire Normal Edition, not even the Pulse Edition, so it is the Sapphire AMD Edition. But, as the time goes on, I believe we will have indeed more models. Will this work for those models? Definitely, yes. Doesn't matter the model you have, it is still an RX 6700. So, this works. But well, let's start with the overclocking tips. Right click on your desktop and you have here AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. Open it and you'll be on this menu, okay? Home, gaming, uh, record and stream, performance, you have the settings, you have the, the recent games. The menu that you want to use is the performance menu, okay? So, right, right click, no, left, left click, click on, on it, it of, of course. course. <laughs> then we have three more tabs. We have the metrics, tuning and advisors, and we're gonna go to the tuning tab. Okay, this, is the menu that you're gonna that you're gonna have here okay that you're gonna have here sorry bad english um i also have the cpu here because i have a ryzen 5600x and if you have a ryzen 5000 series it will appear here on the cpu tab as well if you have an older cpu it most likely won't but with the 5000 series they will appear on a radian on the radian software okay and it says overclock cpu because i have curve optimizer on bios okay so let's just close this tab and go directly to the amd radian 6700 even on the software it isn't it isn't called rx it is just amd radian 6700 so yeah Good, good, AMD, good. good. First thing that you actually want to do is go here to the because it will be like this default. So you want to go to manual tuning and select the custom. Then you will unlock these menus and you have to enable everything. So enable GPU tuning, enable the advanced control. If you do not enable the advanced control, you'll have voltages and frequencies in percentage and you don't really want that. So advanced control and bam, you have megahertz and millivolts. Now VRAM tuning, enable, advanced control, enable, fan tuning, enable, power tuning, enable, and then apply. And I usually go to the, f the most important thing, which is the power tuning, okay? As for the power tuning, I could tell you several things, but what I always say is to just grab the slider and put it at the max. 
depending on your model, for example, if you have a lower end model, uh, your maximum power limit may, may be just 5%, maybe 10%, 15% like mine, or maybe even 0% depending on your model, okay, on your card model. For example, the 6700 XT from MSI, the Mac version, I believe, has 0% power limit. If you go to better models, they will have like 15%, 30%, 50%, it depends on your model, okay? But as for now, we go to the max percentage in terms of power limit. And why? First, uh, it is because the GPU may need more power. And some, bo some board partners actually restrict the power, um, the power usage of the GPU in order to be able to use lower end components. Because lower end components are cheaper, uh, so they can make the card cheaper, uh, but they actually have to restrain the power usage because the components may fry if more power is applied, okay? That's one of the reasons. Uh, that's why you should always get a better model because you can have a higher power limit and some and the second one is that some cards are actually power restricted by their bios okay the company makes um a bias for for example sapphire sapphire makes a bias and it has a tops of let's say 180 watts 180 watts and if you reach that power roof even if you overclock the max you want, the, the GPU will downclock or will actually, um, will actually restrain the performance in order to maintain that 180 watts roof. But if you increase the power limit, it means that the power roof gets higher and the GPU will perform better. Now, this, the power limit doesn't mean that the GPU will automatically consume more power just because you have the power limit at 15% plus. It will consume more power if it actually needs more power to perform better, okay? That's how it works. If your GPU uh, was actually power restrained and it wasn't performing as it should due to power consumption, then putting the power limit to the max will definitely help in terms of performance. It may consume a bit more, but it will help in terms of performance. If your GPU wasn't power restricted to start with, then raising the power limit to 15% or even 50% won't make any difference. The, the GPU will just perform as it, were, as it was performing before, okay? That's it. Now let's go to the GPU tuning. GPU tuning is basically the core overclocking. You have the graphics card core and you have the VRAM tuning, okay? But for now, we're gonna go to the graphics card core. We have here in the RX 6000 series, we actually have the minimum frequency and the maximum frequency. And for the best and the most stable experience in terms of gameplay smoothness, I always advise people to use minimum frequency just 100 megahertz below the maximum frequency. So for example, we have 2600, let's just put a flat number here, 2600 and the minimum frequency should be 2500. Apply. And don't worry because having these values, minimum and maximum frequency, 2500, 2600, doesn't mean that the GPU will always be at 2500 megahertz. For example, you can see the, um, the clock speeds right now and they are at 80 from 50 to 80 megahertz. Sometimes a bit higher, but not even close to the 2500 megahertz because these values apply to the 3D applications like games. So if you're using your system in idle, watching some videos, these values do not apply. These values are for heavy 3D applications. And I'm using so far 2500 minimum and 2600 maximum because I found that this is the sweet spot for this card. You can go higher, you can go 2600, 2700, but you'll have like 5% increase in performance while your power draw will increase by like 20 or 30 watts. Like you will be able to watch in the end of the video with comparisons, okay? You'll be able to watch the difference in between all these values, okay? Um, but the power draw just cons goes considerably higher for a marginal performance increase. So for me, it is not worth it at all. That's why I keep 2500 uh, to 2600. And you can go even higher. I tested this card at 2700, 2800, and 
it worked. I could undervolt this card very well too, and um, the power consumption would be around 160 watts, uh, a bit higher than I have right now. So maybe 10% increase in performance with these values, 10% increase over the 2500, 2600, but at the same time we go from 120 watts, 100 to 120 watts, to 160, 170, depending on how low you can go in terms of voltage. So in my opinion, it isn't worth. But if you want to get the maximum performance you can, then you can simply go 2700, 2800, and then you can increase the decrease the voltage i mean step by step and see how low you can get stable but for now we're going to use 2500 to 2600 which like i told you before is the sweet spot for these cards after after this you go over the wall and the, um, the power draw and the heat output will just be insane as for the voltage i can go as low as 10 40 millivolts so it is a huge difference. We we are going from 1200 to 1040 millivolts. Take in consideration though that these cards, the, the RX 6000 series, they do not work with a static voltage. They work with an offset. So depending on the frequency that you choose for the minimum and maximum frequency, the offset will be different. Obviously that if you go lower on the voltage slider, the offset the, the voltage after the offset the offset will also be lower and that's the point of doing the actual undervolting here because imagine that you choose for example 2500 and 2600 and you choose here uh, 1040 millivolts once you apply load to the GPU let's say that the actual voltage is let's say 1100 millivolts if you go for 2600 2700 putting still 1040 millivolts the, the voltage offset will be different, so the actual voltage, instead of, of being 1100, 1100 millivolts, it may be, for example, 1150 millivolts. Because the, the card will adjust automatically the voltage depending on the frequency. This in order to ensure the maximum stabil stability available. But every time you, you decrease the slider, you put the slider down, um, the voltage will decrease slightly, so that's a good thing, I believe. Back to the topic, 2500, 2600, I can go as low as 1040. All cards are different, so you may be able to reach lower values, or you may be able to reach not so lower values, and you may actually need to increase the voltage. I believe you should start with 1100 millivolts, to start with, because it is a pretty nice value, in my opinion, then you test, uh, for example, you test a game or you do the stress test here. You can just do the stress test, let's say 10 minutes. If you don't have any problems in between the 10, mini the 10 minutes period of time, then just decrease to 1090. Apply changes, stress test again, 10 more minutes. Then decrease to 1080, stress test again, till you go to the minimum, uh, to the minimum, stable settings that you can get. Imagine that you are stable in the stress test with 1030, okay? 1030 and your stress test is fine. Then what you do is go and put 1040. 1040 just to ensure the maximum stability because if you know that 1030 is indeed stable, 1040 will be even more stable. So that's why we want this to ensure the maximum stability, okay, and apply. Like I told you before, all cards are different. It's just luck of the draw, yeah. Now as for the VRAM tuning, we have different we have different options from the RX 5000 series. On the RX 6000 series, we actually have the memory timings like on Vega and on the Polaris cards like the RX 580 and the RX 570. For the memory timings, we now have the default and the fast timings. Basically, the default are the slower timings, the loser timings, the bigger timings, because bigger timings are bad, the, the tightened timings are the, the better ones, so Lower timings, good. Higher timings, bad, okay? Because it takes more time to do the same work. So you can start with the default memory timings. These card options lead you, lead you to a maximum of 
2150 megahertz which is not that much so in my opinion after seeing this you should go to fast timings and then try 2100 if you choose the fast timings with 2100 megahertz it should work out of the box flawlessly okay you may be really really unlucky and you may not be able to work with it at 2100 megahertz but if it is crashing or something just go and select the default timings and then I'm absolutely sure then that it will be good to go okay 2100 with the default timings is 99% sure that it will work out of the box with fast timings maybe like 70% of cards will work with fast timings at 2100 and the others won't okay it is what it is now as you can see the the VRAM tuning also has an offset so it shows 2100 but we have 2088 megahertz and for that I always select 2112 2112 apply changes and BAM we have the flat 2100 megahertz this is how these cards work they just have these offsets for stability okay being it in terms of vram or being it in terms of gpu tuning they do have these offsets and that's why we have to play a bit with the voltage and the offsets and the frequencies in order to get the best stable results uh, for these cards imagine if i go 2600 if i go 2600 and 2700 megahertz just a little tip the voltage that I can select here is lower and it is lower why because the voltage offset is higher and if the voltage offset is higher it means that the actual voltage will also be higher and if the actual voltage is higher I can decrease the voltage slider more in order for the card to decrease the offset as well so it it may seem it may seem a bit complicated but it is not so imagine if I select the maximum frequencies 2700 2800 the voltage slider can go even lower and it can go lower because the offset is even higher it means that the real voltage will be higher and if you decrease you can actually decrease the voltage slider more because the offset will be higher and you are actually decreasing the offset voltage making the final voltage lower if you go to the 2500 2600 I can't go below 1020 because uh, the card will start artifacting okay but 1040 is my sweet spot and as for the final step we have the fan tuning the fan tuning the only thing that I actually do on the fan tuning on this card which is the sapphire AMD version not even the pulse edition the only thing that I actually do on this card the only things because I do two things here on the fan tuning is basically disabling the zero rpm because when you are actually idling the fans will stop spinning but um, the idle temperatures will be way higher like from 45 to 55 degrees and i do not like those temperatures being that high so i always disable the zero rpm because if the fan is at below 1000 rpm you won't even listen to it and the temperatures will be way lower the temperatures are 49.51 now because I'm actually recording with a card and that also takes a toll on the on the card as well and temperatures that's normal okay that's why the power tuning is at 30 watts that's why um, but in normal situations the temperature will be way lower than it is and I also decrease the maximum fan speed from 100 to 80% 100% will sound like a jet engine and I absolutely I am absolutely disgusted by that and with 80% it is actually acceptable it won't just ramp up that much it is an acceptable noise for me okay you can be playing considerably good with it uh, the temperatures will be good and the noise levels will also be good so a maximum of 80 percent in this exact model for me in some different models well uh, the percentage may be higher or lower if you are getting higher temperatures then well increase the maximum fan speed but for this model 70 or 80 percent will be completely fine yeah 
And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. As always, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think. And if you have some doubts, leave them in the comment section and I will answer as fast as I can. As always, we have in the end of the video um, small comparisons in between the three states, so the maximum overclock, the my undervolt and overclocking settings, and stock settings to see how they perform and how you should actually aim in terms of what you want or not, okay? That's how I do things. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. Oh, hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Hello? Anyone here?